Hi guys. In the interest of science, I suppose we could call it, or to answer a request on uh, one of my old videos, I've got to dig in here into our fridge because I need an aluminium can. And in the back of here, That aluminium can has been there. Let's have a look. Best before end of 07 02 21. So that was February, it was best before end date. I'm not sure what sort of date they have on these, probably usually a year anyway. So that one's been in there for a long time. Anyway, I will have to empty it so that I can actually make use of the aluminium can. So I'll do that and then we'll uh, get on with the actual project. It may take a few minutes to do this, so yeah, we'll come back later. The plan is to make a glider out of the aluminium can. I've done it twice before back in 2015, so that was six years ago. In fact, almost six years to the month. I think it was August I did it in 2015. And I've just had a comment on one of those old videos, because it was one of those videos where I didn't actually expect anybody to try and copy what I was doing. I was just trying things out. So I fast forwarded it. So you couldn't actually see the detail of what I was doing. And the request was, could I do it again with more detail? So we have an aluminium can. We need to cut the ends off and then cut it up the middle so we get a flat sheet. And before I go any further, I will say when you're cutting aluminium like this, you're going to get sharp edges. There's a good chance you'll cut yourself. So if you decide to copy me, you're doing it entirely at your own risk. And if I cut myself on video, then I suppose that's a benefit because you can see how easy it is to do it. Um, if you've got suitable tin snips, you can use them to cut the aluminium. A good strong pair of scissors will do it. And a good strong Stanley knife. I would recommend. I don't know if this um, utility knife will be strong enough. We'll have a go. Right, we're in. Well, I suppose you could try dremeling it as well. I did recently buy myself a tool. It's not actually a Dremel, but it's that sort of thing. So you could try using that to cut all the way around the edge. But whatever you do, you're going to end up with sharp edges.
Right, I did swill it out, so that, that's water coming out at the moment. You need to cut it down there. So a pair of scissors would probably do the job, but it might ruin them at the same time. Let's see how we get on. That's our aluminium sheet. Now ideally, we'd do something to it to stop it, stop it being quite so springy. I'm just very well aware that I'll probably end up cutting myself. Just rubbing it with my screwdriver to try and get the bend out of it. That's quite a bit better. Right, I'm just going to get a tissue to wipe off the water water and then we'll carry on right dried it off seem to have put a, a bow in it that way now I got rid of the bow the other way now design I'm going to try and do it all in one piece because that's what I did last time. I'll get a different ruler. This one's in inches and people don't understand feet in inches nowadays. I've got to use centimetres and millimetres, haven't I? Back again. Now, any dimensions I give you, I'm making them up on the spot. I've got no... Um, specific design this is 205 millimeters long which was the circumference of the tin and this way it's about 120 more or less which is the height of the tin or at least the, the flat side of the tin uh, Right, I did two last time. I did a delta shape and I also did one that had wings and a tail. It's going to be quite small. Uh, what's the easiest way to do this? halfway point the middle if 
make the fuselage 10 centimeters deep that means I'm measuring 10 centimeters 10 millimeters one centimeter either side of that center line and when I fold it up that will be my fuselage up the middle ideal world I'd actually do that an angle so it's wider at the front and thinner at the back but I can't comprehend that in my head at the moment so our wingspan what we've got left is about 90 millimeters nine centimeters I'm going to go for 30 on either side. bit small well, we'll go with it and twenty five Sun's coming out. We'll draw them square at the moment, but I'll probably trim them off at an angle. We've got to have a nose on it to try and balance it. So I'm coming forwards one, two, three, forty millimeters. wing judge this by eye which is not the best way to do it so all that like that for now that's our very basic wing shape plan is to cut this out, fold it, the front end we need weight on it, nose weight, so I might actually leave this strip that I'm going to cut and wrap it round the front to add weight. Yeah, 
think I'll come up I reckon five millimeters. Just give it a bit of a forward taper. Oh, just broke my pencil. That's no good. Right, that's it. Well, we've got no um, no fin or rudder. Yeah, I'll, I'll leave the rudder off entirely because that's going to add weight at the back there, and we're going to have problems balancing this as it is. So I'll have a, a V tail instead of a flat tail and a rudder. Okay, here goes nothing. We'll go for it. In an ideal world, I'd have rolled a little bit over the front there to stiffen up the leading edge. wonder if that's worth doing. Just a thought. If we give this an extra about an extra five millimetres at the front What I'll do is I'll actually fold that over to stiffen the front edge. So cut this up here. Up to there. Just realise that I don't need to leave these connected, I can wrap them round afterwards, so I will cut cut up here to that point. So the idea is I'm gonna fold that edge over in a minute. Cut 
trim that off a little bit as well. Give it a bit of a Taper. Oh my gosh, you definitely need to use the ruler. Right, that's the basic shape. Then along that fold line, If I'd have done this all the other way up, we'd have had the artwork on the top. I've done it the other way. Okay, that's our wing. I haven't folded them very well.
its centre of gravity, where it balances, needs to be about a quarter to a third of the way back from the front of the wing. Yes, these are 35, a third of the way back would be one centimetre. So what centre of gravity around about here somewhere? And at the moment it's way too far near the back. So my plan was to wrap this round. It may not be heavy enough. Still tail heavy. I just thought it'd be nice if it was all made of aluminium. I would normally put blue tack on here to add weight. Closer, still a bit tail heavy, and those wings are clearly not the same size. I've got my folds wrong there. That wing's bigger than that wing. Still, I'll give it a little throw and see what happens. Right, summary time. For those of you unfamiliar with YouTube videos, I will obviously edit that so we get the best flights. I've been trying this for about 20 minutes now to try and get some good flights for the camera. Quite often it flew quite well, but not for the camera. It disappeared. So what you see will be edited flights. Every time it lands, it bends, so you have to re-trim it. Uh, an advantage, that front bit, because I wrapped the aluminium round, I can actually adjust the centre of gravity quite easily. I did add, it, add some blue tack on the front here, more a matter of protecting the camera in case I hit it, rather than actually adding weight, because I can add, add weight, or effectively add weight, by moving that in and out. So we can have quite a long nose like that, if we want, to move the centre of gravity forwards. So every time it lands, it bends. So if you've got it all trimmed right and you get one really good flight, the next one won't be so good, because it will have bent on landing. So that is a problem with using this aluminium foil or tin can for the... Uh, for the material we built it from. Anyway, did get some good flights there, better than I expected, so fairly pleased with that. So thank you for watching.